frustrated because I was broke. And that night, I needed at least 200K to be okay for like three days. I was about leaving when a G-Wagon stopped in front of me and asked me how much for a night. And I said 500K because for you to have that kind of car, you must have plenty money. The guy didn't price. He just said, enter, let's go. And I told him to transfer 250K for me first before I enter. Then he can balance up after we are done. And he did that and we left. The drive was far that I was already getting tired of the ride. And I kept asking him, what's up? Why is the place too far like that? He said, we are going to his place that it's somewhere at Magodo. In my mind, I was like, ah, that's foul. And he said, I shouldn't worry that he will pay for my cab coming back. And I said, no problem. 30 minutes later, we got to his house and it was like a castle with two maids and two guards. And that's the only house on that street. At first, I was scared, but I maintained my cool because I know rich people can be weird sometimes. He took me to his room and I took my bath and I was on my towel and I heard a knock on the door. I answered and the maid came in and gave me foods and drink. I didn't see the guy again till it was 11 p.m. when he came in and told me that he wanted to go read some books, that he would join me shortly. In my mind, I was like, sure, this man will not come so we can do what we came here to do. But I just told him, okay. And after eating, I slept off. Then 2 a.m., I woke up and I checked my time. And he wasn't in the room, so I got up and left the room to go look for him. Immediately, I stepped out. I passed about three rooms, and the fourth one, I was hearing voices, so I peeped. I saw this guy with his two guards in front of a table with knives and a huge meat on the table. In my mind, I was, ah, ah, are they having a feast tomorrow? This one, they are prepping meat. So I don't know what took my eye to where the fridge is, and I saw a human head in a transparent container with eyes. Ha. I almost screamed, but thank God I didn't. And that was when it dawned on me that the meat on the table is actually a human being. He told the guys that if they are done with this one, that they should go get me. And I was like, so this is how I will end. So I quietly went back to the room and took my phone and left my bag there because I didn't want to carry anything heavy. I was just trying my luck. I prayed to God that if he saves me from that day, that I will never do this work again. So I left the room and I found my way back to the back door because there were so many doors. What I saw at the backyard, I almost fainted. I saw bones, clothes of people they might have killed. So I finally got outside the compound and made it to the gate. But the gate man is there and awake too. So I figured he might not let me go just like that. So I took a bottle just in case I can smash his head and open the gate and run away. But to my greatest surprise, when I got to the gate, the gate man opened the gate for me and told me to run as fast as I can, that I'm the only person that have en ever entered this house and came out alive, that I am even lucky, that he first saw me when I was at the backyard, and he said to himself that if I ever make it to this gate, that he will set me free. And that, that's how God used that gate man to save my life. I ran as fast as I could and I was trying to get a cab, but the location wasn't coming up and no network. So I was walking and running until I saw a truck and I flagged him down and he took me to where I entered bike to the main road. And then I booked a cab to my place at Ikeja. And that's how I escaped. And ever since then, I changed my ways and started going closer to God because he gave me a second chance and I will use it to serve him. So young girls, please be careful out there. Mm. <coughs> I don't have much to say. Please share this video to get to as many young girls as possible because it's always our young girls. I don't know what is wrong with you.